Hey guys, episode 7 of our San Jose Sharks rebuild in the prior episode, in case you missed it, we simmed through the first part of year 3 after going through free agency and re-signing all the players that we needed to, with a huge influx of young talent, including our first overall pick in Connor Bedard. Now the start to year 3 was a little rocky, but we made some changes in the lineup, and Matthew Savoy, our first round pick in 2021, had led the way early on, and he is in the race for the Calder Trophy. So in this episode, we will carry on throughout year three, hopefully make the playoffs as we are in a position to, and go through the deadline to see what we can do. Now for the deadline, I'm not sure what I really want to do going into this one. Obviously, we aren't sellers this year. We are trying to make the playoffs. We have a couple guys on one-year deals, including Alexander Edler on the back end. We've also signed Burakovsky and Kalorn in free agency. And I don't really want to move on from them because we are in a place that we can try and make the playoffs. The playoffs? Don't talk about it. playoffs. But we'll go through the roster and see if there's anyone that we think should move on for. Maybe some picks, some AHL players that we just aren't going to use. And see if we can help get some assets as this draft looks to be very, very good. All right, guys, like I said, here we are in, in March, sorry, two days before the deadline. And we'll take a look at the team right now as Timo Meyer, Matthew Savoy up to an 85 overall, and Tomash Hurdle at 90, all at a plus five. So they are firing on all cylinders here. Eklund is on our second line, who's had a decent year, 30 points in 62 games. Although Ivan Kuhlman has been a little bit better. He's down here with Logan Gutscher and Burakovsky, Kalorn, and there is Connor Bedard, who again hasn't really had that huge jump in points yet, but uh, we'll see if he can throughout the third part of the year on defense. We've got Ferraro, Carlson, Merkley, Edler, Middleton, and Kinezhov. I wouldn't mind trading for a defenseman potentially. And then in net, we've got Lindbergh and Talbot. And honestly, they've been okay. Um, haven't really had to do much with them. So we'll see what we can get going into the deadline. We'll sim up to it <clears throat> and see... Uh, if there is, uh, you know, someone that we should target, we'll take a look at the draft class as well as that Christian Norgren as a medium franchise that it does not look like we are going to have a shot at as we hopefully will make the playoffs. But there are a lot of medium elites at the top part of this draft that I do want to make sure that we maybe at least try to get one of them. Uh, so maybe we move our first for a worst team's first, you know, something like along those lines. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we'll take a look around the league just to make sure. A uh, good, good thing to do, guys, going into the deadline is to make sure you take a look at the standings just so that you have a better understanding of where everyone is because you don't want to trade picks with someone who's, you know, absolutely dominating in the league right now. So among the bottom of the league, we have got, let's see here. We've got the Buffalo Sabres as they just continue to be one of the worst teams in the NHL, which is sad. Again, I've lived in Buffalo for about eight years of my life. I love it when Buffalo teams do well, even the Bills. The Ottawa Senators right there, they haven't done well. The Boston Bruins have fallen off. St. Louis, Vegas as well. Montreal, Vancouver, Seattle, Calgary, and Nashville. So those are the teams we want to target and see. Um, if we're going to move picks, that's who we'd want to look for. But let's go ahead and get into the deadline and uh, see what if we can do some any any of the uh, some damage in the trade deadline. Is here we go. We're gonna be a conservative buyer, and we're gonna enter the deadline here. See who is available. As Elias Lindholm from Calgary is available, Connor Murphy on the back end again. A defenseman might be what we're looking for. Jake McCabe could be an option. Uh, from the Chicago Blackhawks, Calvin DeHaan, another one. He's got a big cap hit, though. Dmitry Orlov, three years left at $9.16 million. Okay. Chris Letang would be an interesting option here. One year left on that deal. I wonder if Chris Letang could be had. He's an 87 overall. Do we rent Chris Letang? I don't know if I want to do rentals is the issue. As Connor Murphy is an 88 overall with an elite potential, obviously. He's three years left at 4.4. That's actually solid. How much would it take to get him, though? That would be a solid score if we could land him. Is there anyone that we actually want to move on from? I mean, Braden Yeager, I don't want to move on from, to be honest with you. We don't really need another centerman. And he does, obviously, you know, a medium elite. Um, as a trade comes in here, the Calgary Flames trade Elias Lindholm and Zucker to Philadelphia for Fantilli and Jilkin. So a big move there from the Flyers. 
Has anyone else left a uh, one-year deal left? It looks like Kniezhev in the AHL is, and he's an 80 overall. So, um, I mean, maybe we could part with him as an 80 overall medium top four. Hmm. I don't know. Alex Edler would be another option as well, but he's only on a one-year deal. And uh, I'm just not seeing it. It's the St. Louis Blues trade. Braden Shen to the Buffalo Sabres for Troy Stetcher and a fifth. What in the world? Middleton, he could go as he's got a, on, a, on his last part of his deal. What picks do we have? We've got our first. Not a lot. We did trade quite a bit in the last year's draft. That's tough. We are going to have a late first round pick. And it is going to be tough for us to move up. I don't think that Connor Murphy is in the cards unless we trade our first round pick. And I just don't think that that's the play in all honesty, in terms of defensemen available. McCabe is still going to be too kind of expensive to go out and get. Uh, we'll take a look around if there's any other players that are, you know, on the trade block that, you know, might be have decent for us on the back end. Uh, not high skin and that's for sure. Not a lot of teams want to give up defensemen. It appears as we go through the list here. But that would be really the only spot that I could see. Fabro might be an option. How much is he? He's... Oh, he's an RFA. He can't even play this year. Wow. Okay, that's good that we did that. Uh, Siegenthaler. Doesn't he? Uh, he's an RFA as well. He didn't want to sign. Man, a lot of RFAs not getting signed. We could go with Braden McNabb. Does he fit? Uh, not really. So we don't have a lot of options here, it appears. Hayden Fleury could be one. And he fits all the top four. I think that might be the play. And I wonder if we can move out some of the later picks. Let's see if any of the skaters matching the block. Is there anyone that we don't want? O'Brien, no. Might as well keep him. Chmielewski, Gadjevich they want. And Gadjevich isn't even playing for us. So we could go Gadjevich in something like... You know, one of these later picks, but they don't want any late picks. But maybe we move out these last three and see. This might get Hayden Fleury done. As wow, the Florida Panthers trade Bobrovsky to the Ottawa Senators. Yikes. Enjoy that deal. Hmm. They don't want that deal. Okay, what about a fourth next year? They do want that. So maybe this is enough. That one's rejected. Add in the 6th and 7th. That's a lot of picks, but... And we do. Okay, we got Hayden Fleury, and I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. I think that's all we're going to do, because um, that's all we need was another defenseman that fits. And uh, we'll take a look. As Yeah, huge trade there between Calgary and Philly, uh, as well as Detroit getting Miroshenko for Murphy from Chicago. Uh, that was the player that we thought about there. Calvin DeHaan goes to Ottawa. Okay, so let's take a look at our lines now. And uh, again, the forwards, we're we're laughing on forward. Uh, but it, it's on the back end that we kind of got to look for here is Hayden Fleury. Hmm. Let's go with Hayden Fleury here. As he is a defensive defenseman which does help out quite a bit. Okay. All right. I think we're all set here for our potential run. Is there any other changes we should make in the lineup? I don't think so. We could go Eklund on that first line, but Meyer's already doing so well. So there's really no need for that. Okay, guys, here we go. We're going to make our playoff push. Hopefully for the first time in the franchise rebuild, these Sharks are going to get into the postseason. We're going to go ahead and sim up to about the last week. And hopefully we're close. All right, guys, seven games to go. And we are in the third spot in the Pacific Division. We've got a two-point lead on the LA Kings. I thought we'd slow things down and see if we can't uh, if we can't make the playoffs. It is close. Timo Meyer leading the way. We'll look into that in just a little bit. But here we go against the Rangers at home. Can we get a big win and kind of secure our spot in the playoffs? And we get an overtime loss. All right, we do get one point. It does look like the Kings uh, are still three points back now. So that's pretty big. We'll take a look again. We'll go now against the Columbus Blue Jackets who are struggling. 
and we get a 7-1 L. Oh my goodness. Two points up on the LA Kings for that third spot in the Pacific Division. It looks like no matter what, we are going to play the Anaheim Ducks. We'll go ahead and slow sim these next few days against the Vancouver Canucks, who are struggling this year. And we lose 1-0, and we fall to the wild card, it looks like, as the Kings pass us. And now things are getting real scary as the Blackhawks do look to be tied with us. So while we apparently hold the tiebreaker, they've got two games left. We've got four. We need to win a couple of these games, absolutely. And it would be huge if we could avoid having to be in a wild card spot. All right, against the Nashville Predators... We lose 4-1, still in a playoff spot. Oh my goodness, a three-game losing streak. The Dallas Stars now. And we finally get a win. That's huge. All right, two games to go. And it does look like... No, that we still there is still a shot at losing this and not making the postseason... We'll just go ahead and make sure. We have 41 wins. We are looking at our first... No, it does look like we did clinch a spot. Okay, all right. So it looks like the Blackhawks, either we can't... Yeah, they've only got one game to go and wield the tiebreaker. So the San Jose Sharks are going to be in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Who are we going to face, though? As it looks like... Do we have a shot at the division? We might, if we can beat the Ducks here. And we do, but we're going to tie the LA Kings... All right, so who are we playing in the first round? It will be the Minnesota Wild, so Kirill Kaprizov as well as Boldy. Hey, we made the postseason. That's huge. We'll do a little quick look at how our team finished off. Meyer led the team in scoring with 66 points. Eric Carlson with 59 on the back end. And Matthew Savoy with 56 in 82 games. A solid rookie season from him. Bedard had 51 in 82, so another great season. Our rookies are starting to perform. Kuhleman had 49. Ackland had 41. So four rookies right there, all doing extremely well. We'll take a look at the rookie race, though. I'm curious on that, as we had a lot of rookies in our lineup. It does look like Maverick Bork from the Colorado Avalanche is going to run away with it, though. 70 points in 82 games. Matthew Savoy in second, Mitch Kov and Bedard side by side as they are going to go into a heated rivalry for the next 20 seasons, uh, it looks like there. So two of our rookies, Eklund finishing down there as well. But here we go. We'll take a look at the rest of the playoff tree in our first season in the postseason. So we've got the Avalanche and Jets, and then we've got the Minnesota Wild and San Jose Sharks, the Ducks and Kings, a battle of California, and Arizona versus the Edmonton Oilers. On the eastern side, we've got the Rangers and Capitals, Carolina and Detroit, Toronto and Florida, and then Tampa and Pittsburgh. All right, we'll take one more look at our lineup, and if we have to make any adjustments here, we might. But we'll slow sim these. So Hurdle, Savoy, and Meyer have really led the way here. I'm wondering if we should put Bedard up on that first line. We'll see if things start to struggle, although I do like the plus three, plus five boost that we do get. That might be the play. Wow, Savoy on that third line really helps. Or we could load up here, take the two away, and go... Mm. I think we're okay with that, though, to be honest with you. As, yeah, we're not going to make any adjustments there. On defense, there isn't really anything we can do as uh, Eric Carlson does fit that first, and so is Mario Ferraro. They have been our studs. Edler as well as our trade deadline acquisition in Hayden Flurry, And then in Nets, we've got Talbot, who had a 902 save percentage, 923. Wow, okay. We might have to take a look there. The AHO also made the postseason, I believe. And they are taking on the Ontario Reign. So a solid season there for both franchises. And it looks like Phillips led the team in, po in, in points in the regular season. Reedy Kanaijev on the back end with 51 points. Cole Sillinger struggling to develop a little bit. 46 points in 82 games. But we'll see. How did our goaltenders do? Because we have a couple of elite goaltenders. Um, not bad. 9-12. 9-28 for Sachenko. Wow. Not bad at all. And on the back end, yeah. So we'll take a look at how they do. We'll be watching them. Because, again, the AHL is a priority. 
in this rebuild, but we're going into game one. Let's see what the 2024 Minnesota Wild look like as we go into our matchup, our first ever postseason series. Kirill Kaprizov, 91 overall. Rem Pitlick and then Matt Boldy is that first line. Matt Boldy up to a 91 overall. They've got Matt Zuccarello. Bobby Brink, uh, an 80 overall. Kevin Fiala, Jordan Greenway. Kuznutdinov, what a name, as well as Erickson Ek, who's an 88 overall. Wow, what a forward core. And on the back end, they've got Brodeen and Spurgeon, Nova Seltsev, and Lambos. Carson Lambos was their first rounder, 26th overall in 2021. What a pickup there for them. And then in nets, they've definitely got the advantage. Gorgiev and Wallstead, though, so not terrible. I mean, we have... You know, goaltender is comparative, and so is our offense, but their defense is, I mean, the top end is pretty good. So here we go. Game number one of the Western Conference quarterfinals. And we are going to sim slow sim this and see how we go. Through the first period, it is going to be 1-1 as Hurdle and Pitlick will get the goals. All right, so 10 shots to 17 from the Minnesota Wild. Through two periods... It is 3-2 Minnesota's Boldy and Kaprizov both score, and Timo Meyer will make it a game here. We're going into the third period down by one and big in shots, but here we go as we'll see if we can tie things up in the third period. We get a power play and we don't score, but we do right after as Connor, as, sorry, as Cody Glass will tie things up. And Matthew Savoy. And another one as we are pouring it on in the third period of game number one. What a third period from the boys as we came close in shots as well. And that is going to do it. We stun Minnesota in game number one. 44 shots to 37. And we are going to win 5-3. We'll take a look at the three stars. Kirill Kaprizov, three assists from Hurdle, or sorry, from Carlson. And then Hurdle with a goal and an assist as well. Awesome first game there, and we stun Minnesota in mini. Can we sweep them at home to take a stranglehold going back to San Jose? Let's go ahead and sim and see what happens here through the first period of game number two, and it's going to be 1-1 again. Spurgeon and Ferraro. Ferraro having a great start to the series. Through the second period, it's still 1-1. Game is close. Going into the third, we get a power play. But we don't capitalize. We have a slight advantage in shots as well. Getting down to the 10-minute mark of the third period. 27 to 23 are the shots. Five minutes to go. Will we see overtime in game number two? And it looks like we will. Okay. So we're going to go into game number two. Into overtime. And I think... It's time we hop in and watch. Here we go, guys. Overtime in game number two. Bedard on the draw against Pitlick. Game two and overtime is underway. And Minnesota is going to start with the puck. Can they get back in the series? A huge hit there from Ferraro, who's had a great series. But Boldy is going to pick it up. They keep it in the zone. Bump away at it. Spurgeon now with it to Boldy in the slot. Good stick there and hurdle for the Sharks out the other way. Tomash Hurdle goes down the wing, cuts into the middle, and Spurgeon with a good defensive play to get it out. Pitlick now, back to Brodeen. Up to Kaprizov, one of the best players in the NHL. Here's Kaprizov, he's in, shot on, and Talbot's going to hold on to that one. Three minutes gone in the overtime of game number two. The Sharks looking to take a 2-0 series lead on the road. Brodeen with it off the faceoff draw. Shot on. That one's going to be saved. Carlson now looks to break it out. Carlson skates down the wing. Huge move there by Bedard, but he's rocked. Now Boldy up between the legs. Boldy into the middle. Kaprizov shot on, and Talbot's going to hold on to that one as Kaprizov and Boldy are buzzing early in overtime. Bedard one more time on the draw. And he can't win it. Brodeen walks in from the point. Shot on. Talbot with another save. Boldy picks it up in the corner. Back to Kaprizov. Walks the line. He's bumped. Still has it. Can't get the shot through. And Meyer now skates out with Hurdle. Hurdle. One on two into the zone. Cuts back to the middle. Here's Bedard. He shoots. That one stopped. Bedard will pick it back up. Walks in and they score. Connor Bedard 
is going to score his first ever playoff goal and give San Jose a 2-0 series lead. What a start to the postseason for these San Jose Sharks as Connor Bedard picks up his own rebound, walks into the front, and fires it home for his first ever playoff goal. All right, guys, so we have a 2-0 series lead going back home to San Jose. We'll take a look at the AHLs. We did lose game one to the Ontario Reign. Take a look around the other series going on currently as the Avalanche and Jets tied at one. The Ducks have a 2-0 lead over the Kings, 2-0 for Edmonton as well as over Arizona. In the East, the Rangers have a 2-0 lead over the Capitals, 1-1 Carolina and Detroit. Florida with a 2-0 series lead over Toronto because, well, they just can't get out of the first round. 1-1 between Tampa and the Penguins. And we have a shot to take a stranglehold over one of the best teams in the league. At home here in game number three is Carlson leading the way with four points for these Sharks. And here we go. Game number three underway. And through the first period, it is 1-0 as Burakovsky will beat Gorgiev and give us a 1-0 lead. Through the second period, it is still 1-0 as these Sharks are playing phenomenal hockey. 2-0 as Edler. Two free agent signings coming up big in game three. And now it's 3-0 as Merkley is just pouring it on. Our defense has been phenomenal in terms of their offensive output so far. Zuccarello will get one back late. It's 3-1 under 5 to go. And that is going to do it. The San Jose Sharks are one game away from sweeping the Minnesota Wild as Talbot put on a performance as 3 of our free agent acquisitions having big, big moments in the first round here. And we have got a chance to sweep them at home. The AHL, they are down 0-2 to the Ontario Reign, so things not going well in the AHL. But the NHL, a shot to move on to the second round in the playoffs of year number three. Let's just get right into it. Give them the upset. Through the first period, it is 2-0. Ivan Kuhleman and Eric Carlson are going to jump on the board. And through two, Spurgeon will get one back, and we've got a game. Shots are 35-19 as these sharks smell blood in the water, it appears. That was a bad pun. All right, here we go. Third period. Power play for the Sharks. And we don't score 41 shots on goal. And Savoy is going to score there to make it 3-1. 43. Bedard is going to jump in. Power play for Minnesota. They need one. It's still 4-1. We have 50 shots on goal as these Sharks are just dominating. And I think it's time we jump in and watch the Sharks close it out in game number four. Our rookies come up big in game four. Savoy and Bedard. And with a minute 30 to go at home, the Sharks are going to close things out, it appears. Fiala, he gets crushed along the boards. Fiala up the middle to Hutton. Now he sends it out to Erickson Eck. Across the line, Minnesota trying to make it a game late. Erickson Eck, but a big save by Talbot. And Savoy is going to circle behind the net and break things out the other way. Now Kalorn signed in the offseason to a two-year deal. Out into the middle, Eklund is going to be robbed as he's absolutely crushed there. 30 seconds left in the series. The Wild over Kuznetsov as Talbot will play it out. Ferraro now over to Eklund. Eklund sends that one over to Kalorn across the line. Kalorn with it, fires it on, and Gorgiev will stop that one. 14 seconds remaining. And the Sharks are going to move on to the second round in a sweep over the Minnesota Wild. Bedard, one more offensive draw. Back to Carlson, who had a great series. He's crushed there. Now Boldy the other way. Ten to go. Across the line. Boldy hit there by Ferraro. Carlson over to Hurdle. And that's going to do it. The San Jose Sharks are going to move on to the second round of the playoffs. As Minnesota is stunned. Unbelievable performance by the Sharks all the way around. I mean, we had over 50 shots on goal. With about five minutes, and here's the handshake. The captain, Logan Couture, leading the Sharks back into the second round. Timo Meyer, our leading scorer in the regular season. 
and we are going to be on to the second round here in the Stanley Cup playoff. The AHL team was eliminated, it appears, so unfortunate there for the Barracuda, but a huge sweep for the Sharks is Bedard leading the way in points with five and four games. And we are going to meet the Winnipeg Jets in the second round of the 2024 playoffs. So it looks like they did beat the Avalanche 4-2 to two in six games as Edmonton and Anaheim will move on in six as well. Across on the Eastern Conference, the Florida Panthers beat the Leafs 4-1. The Tampa Bay Lightning beat the Penguins 4-2. Game 7 goes to the New York Rangers against the Capitals, and Carolina will knock out Detroit. And we are into the second round. They were down to eight teams. Let's take a look at the team we're going up against, see how Winnipeg stacks up as their offense. They've got Kyle Connor, Shifley, and Ellers, one of the best first lines in the league. Ryan Getzlap at 38 years old. Cole Perfetti and Pierre-Luc Dubois, 90 overall. So a couple of great players here. Andrew Kopp, Lowry, Nick Foligno on the back end of his career. Jensen Harkins, Wheeler, and Evgeny Svechnikov. On defense, they've got Schmidt and Pionk, Demelo Morrissey, and Juolevi and Chisholm. Really good squad here. Again, really, really well balanced. And then in net, they definitely have the advantages. Connor Hellebuck is a 96 overall. Good Lord, we are going to have an issue here but who knows we stunned minnesota can we stun the winnipeg jets let's get into game number one and see how we fare in this one through the first period of game number one in winnipeg and it is 0 0 11 11 are the shots after two it is two nothing winnipeg cop and dubois are gonna make it two nothing we'll go into the third can we come back? We had a huge comeback in Game 2 against Minnesota. But it doesn't look like we're going to have the same... Hold the phone. Eric Carlson makes it a one-goal game. And we tie things up as Kalorn is going to make it 2-2. Two to two. And the Sharks have tons of fight here. Under a minute to go. And we're going to overtime in Game 1. Let's hop into it. What a comeback in the third for the Sharks. As they try to stun Winnipeg and take game number one. Bedard the hero in game four. As a shot on goal, Talbot's going to hold on to that one. Bedard already has an overtime winner to his career and name in game two. Of the quarterfinals against Minnesota. Can he do it again? Moving up to the first line here. As Pionk rips one on, Talbot with a big save, kicked out to the corner. Ellers over to Pionk. They circle at the point, down to Shifley. Carlson does battle with him, but Shifley's going to come out in front. Talbot going to just hold on to that one. Bedard wins that one. Ferraro now looks to break it out. He's pressured, turns it over. Shifley now with Connor into the slot. He's bumped. Ellers with it on the backhand, and a huge save from Talbot as the pressure is on. Winnipeg's first line just going to work against the Sharks. As Meyer now looks to break it out. He gets crushed and they just can't get out of the zone. Ferraro now up to Meyer. Two on two. And he gets in across the line. He's got a step into the corner. Out in front to Hurdle and a huge stop by Hellebuck. What a chance there for Tomash Hurdle. Connor Bedard, you see that leading the team in points with five coming into this game. He loses the draw to Shifley though. Schmidt with it. Sends that over to Ellers. Ellers across the red line now. He works one on none, and Talbot with a huge blocker save there. Shifley now loses it to Carlson. Carlson up to Hurdle. Great chance earlier. On the back end, he stops up, hits Meyer. Meyer with a huge shot, and that one stopped by Hellebuck. As he is showing exactly why he's a 96 overall. Draw win. Ferraro now with it. He walks in. Trickled her towards the net. Schmidt will pick it up and break it out the other way. Here's Winnipeg, one on two. Schmidt with it, stops up, hits Shifley. He rips one on, and Talbot, as both goaltenders putting on a clinic here in overtime of game number one. Hurdle sends that one over to Meyer. Timo Meyer has it. Kick move, loses it though. Can he get it back? Pionk held up along the boards. Ellers comes in for support, and now Connor the other way. Connor with it. 
Across the line, little deke move. Can't get his shot away. Timo Meyer now out the other way for Hurdle. Here's Tomash Hurdle. Across the line, rips it on. That one's blocked by Pionk. He's going to get the rebound, though. Here's Ferraro walking in from the point. Now down behind the net, pinned up along the boards. Connor is going to pick it up, but he turns it over. Can they keep it? They can't. Perfetti has got it. He's pressured there, but he sends it over to Connor. Now Connor across the line. Still has it. Poked off his stick. Great defensive play. Now Meyer. Timo Meyer across the line. Nice little move shot on, and Hellebuck will hold on to that one. Eight minutes to go. Savoy on the draw. And he loses it. Perfetti over to Schmidt. Pionk. Pionk logging a ton of minutes here in game number one. Perfetti now across the line. Stops up. Shot on. Easy save there for Talbot. Now Savoy with it. Perfetti will win it. Pionk walks in from the point. Sends that back to Schmidt as they cycle around. Huge hit by Kalorn. Pionk rips one on. And Talbot sends that into the corner. Carlson pinned up along the boards. Savoy can't get it back to Pionk. They cycle in the offensive zone. Kalor knocks it free, but he can't get there. Pinned up along the boards. Now they come in for support as they chase it. But Winnipeg's going to come away with it as here's Cole Perfetti. Across the line. Sticked free. Now Ferraro sends that one over to Savoy. Savoy to Kalorn. Kalorn's got it. Across the line. Weaves in. Here's Savoy. Shot on. That one doesn't get through. He picks up the rebound. Back out to Kalorn. Into the middle and gets slapped. will intercept that as Eklund just missing that one. Now Winnipeg out the other way. They weave in. Here's Perfetti into the slot. Shot on. Rebound. And that one picked up by Carlson as they go end to end. Here's Eklund. William Eklund across the line. Now to Savoy. Savoy rips it on. And an easy save there for Hellebuck as two minutes remain in the first overtime. Savoy will win the draw. Back to Eric Carlson. Shot on. Easy save there for Connor Hellebuck, here's Kalorn's shot, and that one stopped as well as the Sharks are all over the net, but Hellebuck just coming up huge. Savoy, another offensive zone draw. And he loses that one to Shifley. DeMello now over to Ellers. Nikolai Ehlers across the line. Back and forth he goes. Can't get it through Ferraro as he's had an unbelievable defensive performance. Kalorn now with it across the line. Here's Alex Kalorn weaving back and forth. Shot on, rebound, kicks out to DeMello. And they'll break it out to the other way. Here's Kyle Connor, the first line for the Winnipeg Jets. Absolutely deadly. Connor rips it on, and Talbot comes up big. A minute 30 remaining in the first overtime. Draw win. Here's Morrissey crushed there. Bedard with it. Sends that over to Meyer. Timo Meyer across the line. He's got step. And Hurdle scores! What a goal for Tomash Hurdle as he buries one upstairs. And the San Jose Sharks come all the way back in game number one and stun Winnipeg in overtime. A huge overtime for Cam Talbot, but it's Tomash Hurdle on a great feed from Timo Meyer. And he rips one upstairs past Connor Hellebuck. And they're 5 0 in the playoffs. Huge win for the Sharks. As we come back down to in the third period, Connor Bedard, six points. And can we win six straight to start our first postseason run in Winnipeg? On the road yet again through the first period of game two, and it's 0-0. Shots are 11-10. Through the second period, it's 3-2 as Ellers, Dubois, and Getzlaff get on the board. Burakovsky and Eklund bury for the Sharks. And we're going to have to come back in the third period yet again. And we do. Hurdle scores to make it 3-3. Ellers will get it right back, though. Ellers again. Unbelievable. is a hat trick for Nikolai Ehlers. And it looks like that might be the dagger. As two quick goals for Winnipeg will give them five. Under five minutes remaining in the third. It's going to take a miracle. And it looks like that's going to be all she wrote for game two. As we finally lose one. As Ehlers with that hat trick, Kyle Connor with three assists. And three is just not enough. As we will tie the series, but go back home to San Jose for a big, big game number three. We'll just jump right into it. Our first game at home in the second round through the first period, it is 0-0. Shots are about even. Through the second period, it is 1-0 San Jose is 
Timo Meyer will get on the board. We're going to go through the third period and get slapped again. We'll get on the board in the third period. It's tied at one. Ten minutes to go in the third period. 28 to 24 are the shots. And we score. Alex Edler from the point is going to give us the lead with under three to go. Can we hold on? And we do. We take the 2-1 series lead as Cam Talbot with a 32 save performance. Edler with a huge goal late. And our free agent acquisition stepping up in key moments yet again. As we have a 2-1 series lead in the conference semifinals against Winnipeg. Timo Meyer now leading the team in points. And I think we are going to end it here, guys. So the next episode of our Sharks Rebuild, we will finish the series against Winnipeg. And can we make the conference finals in year number three? It's already been a successful season. But can we make it even better? Make sure to tune in next time, guys. Have a good one.